Every five to seven years, Congress passes a massive legislation that determines how hundreds of billions of dollars will be spent on agriculture, nutrition assistance, and conservation efforts. This is known as the Farm Bill. Even if you don't live near a farm or in the middle of farming country, the Farm Bill affects you. If you eat, pay taxes, care about the hungry, value fresh water, fish, and wildlife, want financial assistance for family farmers, think school lunches should be healthy, you have a stake in the Farm Bill. In fact, it probably should be called the Food and Farm Bill. Of every Farm Bill dollar spent over the past 10 years, nearly 73 cents went to food stamp and nutrition programs. 14 cents went to subsidies for commodity crops like corn, cotton, wheat, rice, soybeans, and milk. Another 7 cents went for crop insurance, where taxpayers subsidize farmers and insurance companies' costs of business. And 6 cents went to conservation programs to prevent soil erosion and protect habitat around farm areas. Less than a penny went to support exports and build markets for U.S. crops. Less than a penny went to on-farm renewable energy investments, crop research, and other important activities. Of all Farm Bill programs, it is the commodity subsidies and crop insurance payments that have the biggest influence on agriculture, and therefore the type of foods most abundant and available. Here's basically how it works. Washington guarantees commodity farmers a wide range of economic assistance programs to limit the risks of farming. Corn is the biggest winner, and farmers grow a lot of it. Most of that corn isn't eaten by humans directly. It's fed to livestock in concentrated animal feeding operations, it's distilled into ethanol, and it's manufactured into industrial food ingredients like high fructose corn syrup. And all that corn-fed meat, milk, and cheap junk food is contributing to an epidemic of diet-related diseases. Meanwhile, farms have become industrialized and factory-like. For years, rural areas have depopulated. We now have a deficit of young people willing and able to go into farming. Most of the fruits and vegetables we're supposed to eat at least five servings per day of receive little farm bill support at all. Such industrialized grain and animal production sends uncontainable nutrients into waterways. They eventually settle and contaminate important fisheries such as the Chesapeake Bay and the Gulf of Mexico. So you can see, all is not well with the food and farm system. The Farm Bill is a powerful opportunity. We need to invest in a 21st century food and farm policy. Healthy meals in our schools. More diversity in the types of crops we support. And more local sources of foods. Animals that are treated humanely and raised on grass. On-farm conservation to protect our soils, rural lands, and waterways for future generations. Programs that provide young farmers and ranchers with the support and skills they need to succeed. We have to wake up quickly and realize that this is our food and farm bill. The current legislation expires on September 30, 2012, and the debate is well underway. It's time for us to get informed, get organized, and make a vote for a healthy food and farming system. It's time for a food fight. Learn what you can do to get involved. Food Fight, the Citizen's Guide to the Next Food and Farm Bill is available now. 